Lori Pacheca, did you grieve when LRH died? If you were too young, do you recall your parents' reaction? Did you feel like you missed the grand old days of LRH's command coming to the Sea Org after his time? L. Ron Hubbard died in 1986, and I was 16 years old, or 15, I think I, would, I, think I had uh, just turned 15 years old, actually. Um, and I was sad when I heard that he died. I was at home. I lived in Santa Maria, California at the time. I was still going to high school. I think I had um, maybe just started. Yeah, I think, I, I think the summer before I had just started doing Scientology services. So it was still kind of, you know, relatively fresh and new for me. Um, and I, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. Because uh, this is exactly what happened when I heard that he died. I did feel sad. I didn't feel sad because the founder of Scientology was dead and what was that going to mean for Scientology or, you know, what was going to happen or I didn't feel adrift in any way because of that. <laughs> Here's why I felt sad. <laughs> when I was about seven or eight years old, I wrote L. Ron Hubbard a letter. And there was a policy in the church that uh, you could always write to Ron, no matter who you were or what you had to say, and he would always get your answer. You would always get your letter and, you know, most of the time write you back. This is called the SO number one line. It's this line that, you know, this, this policy in Scientology. And I did not know at the time that other people were answering, you know, reading his mail and answering for him. I had no idea about that. I'm eight years old. I get this letter back from him, uh, and it, um, it, it talked about, I talked about how I had gone to summer camp, and Hubbard, or, or ostensibly, or somebody in Hubbard's name, wrote me back and said that they, re, you know, that, uh, in Hubbard's name, saying, I remember going to the Boy Scout camp, you know, when I grew up in Montana or wherever, and I always had a good time why don't you write me back and tell me about your experiences? Well, I tried to write him back. I never could write the whole story of my summer camp experience because I was pretty young and I, and I never really sat down and wrote it all out. I had this sort of vision of what I wanted to tell him. I tried writing him back with this other, and sending him some, I don't know, some little finger puppets or something. Uh, again, I was eight years old, right? And my dad stopped me from sending those. He, um, he thought that Hubbard didn't really need that and said, I think Ron has a few more things to do than, than get your finger puppets. And, I, and, I, and that kind of stopped the communication at that point. I didn't really have anything else to say to Hubbard. So I grew up, right? And, and then comes around to being, you know, seven, eight years later and he dies. And my thought was, shit, I'm not gonna be able to write him about that summer camp. <laughs> I know that's ridiculous. I know that that is the stupidest thing ever. I'm just honestly telling you what went through my head. Um, that I had never, I felt that I had somehow uh, not fulfilled an obligation that I'd had to not write him back and in, in, in not doing that. So, um, so that was my initial thought when he died. We then saw the event that David Miscavige put on at the Palladium where they announced his death and talked about the, you know, coming OT levels and that Ron was off doing further research and this sort of thing. And I took it all in uh, at face value. I, I, I took everything I heard at, at, you know, yes, okay, this is what's happening. And I, you know, believed in a spiritual existence when I was 15, 16 years old. So I didn't have any reason to doubt that Ron was sailing off in the galaxy you know, going off to other planets and, and figuring things out. So that was, that was kind of my thought process at the time. I was never regretful that when I joined, when I later joined the Sea Org when I was 25 years old, I was never regretful that I was not in the Sea Org when Hubbard was around. I voraciously would, you know, encounter people and stop them who had met Hubbard or worked with Hubbard, and I would just quiz them, sometimes for over an hour, about everything Hubbard. Tell me all about him. You know, what was he like? I was trying to answer for myself at that point the question, how did one man figure all this out? It didn't make any sense to me. I couldn't think my way through it. Um, I didn't then know, I didn't, obviously I didn't know then what I know now, that Hubbard didn't figure it all out, that he was a, a you know, blatant plagiarist. 
uh, and, and thief. He would just steal people's ideas and call them his own. I, I had no idea that he had ever done anything like that. I took it, again, naively on face value that everything was, with his name on it was written by him. Everything that he said was his original thinking. And that, of course, is not true, as I've documented all over my channel. So I was trying to figure this out, though, because there was such a body of work. I mean, this, um, this, this tremendous uh, thousands of bulletins, policy letters, lectures, all this work. Plus, he was a Pulp Fiction writer. Plus, he was a seaman and he was a, a you know, mu music maker and filmmaker and like all these professions. And I'd, I'd bought into all of the church propaganda about all of that. And I was trying my best to figure my way through how could somebody do that. And of course, the answer in Scientology is, well, he was Ron. He was amazing. He was incredible. Well, you know, nobody's like Ron. Nobody could put stuff out like Ron. So I would corner people who actually knew him or actually worked with him. And I'd, you know, tell me all about him. And I would always get uniformly the hero worship stories about how amazing and wonderful and compassionate he was. And I would very rarely, very, very rarely would I get anything critical of Hubbard. Um, I've learned a lot more about the, the dark sides of, of working for him personally after I left the church from former members who are willing to look at Hubbard with a little bit more of a critical eye and look at him more as a human being rather than the reverence which we you know, gave him when we were in the church. So I hope that answers that question.